OK, so drafting settings wise now, I've got Polar, OSNAP, OTRAC and Dynamic switched on. I leave those switched on all the time when I'm working in AutoCAD, AutoCAD Electrical, whichever flavour of AutoCAD I'm working in. What we're going to do now is look at line weight here, LWT. If I click that on, you'll see that line weight is on, tells you that on the command line. Click on it again and line weight goes off. It is purely an on off switch, that's all it does. What I'm going to do is change the properties of the layers of the lines in this drawing. So I'm going to select the external lines, like so. And to change the properties, I'm going to put them on a different layer. Don't worry about layers, we will look at that later on in the course. In the layers panel here, in the home tab on the ribbon, I've got some pre-prepared layers. I'll put those lines on the external layer by clicking on the word external. And you'll see they go that blue color, the same color as the layer. It's a cyan color. I hit escape there to deselect those lines like so. What I'm going to do now is select the internal lines, do the same thing again, make sure I select them like that, and put those on the internal layer so they go red, and then hit escape to deselect. Now, one of those layers has got a different line weight associated with it. So if I switch on LWT at the bottom here, you'll see that the external layer has a heavier line weight than the internal layer. You normally use this for highlighting and showcasing things that you want to stand out on a drawing. If I click on LWT again, it just sets all the line weights back to the same default setting. If I go up to the layer properties here, there's my external layer there with all its properties. You'll notice, look, it's got a 0.5 millimeter line weight. However, that only displays if the line weight toggle is on down on the status bar. The rest of the time, the lines just display this default setting. So I'll close the layer properties. And again, when I switch line weight on, there's the highlighted layer with its heavier line weight. If I switch line weight off, like so, it goes back to the default line weight again. Now, if I right click on LWT, are there any settings there? No. All you can see are enabled, use icons. Click there though, and you can do it this way. There's no actual settings like object snaps, but what you can do is apply line weight settings. So you can see here, I've got all the settings there. Units for listing are in millimeters in this case. I could change that to inches. I can display the line weight. I can adjust the display scale as well. So what I can do there is I can adjust the default there and display all line weights at that setting and avoid switching LWT on, for example. I can also set those to inches, and you'll notice now the line weights display in inches. So when I'm setting those in my layer properties, they will display in inches. If I go back to millimeters now, you'll see it goes back to millimeters. So there are some settings there, but they're more settings in the traditional sense, as in in the background, rather than like with object snaps where you can toggle and switch things off and on all the time. I'll click on OK there now and leave everything as it was. And that's your line weight, your LWT setting in the status bar in AutoCAD Electrical. When you're working with AutoCAD Electrical and you're creating perhaps schematics or panel views, anything in AutoCAD Electrical, you might want to use something like a hatch or a solid fill to highlight an area on a drawing. The drafting setting TPY here, transparency, actually allows you to hide or not hide any transparent objects. I'll just switch it back off again for now. So let's go now and place a hatch on this area here where the circle is. Now you can use a hatch or a fill. I'm going to use a solid fill because it's more definite and more obvious when you use the transparency tool. Now I've got a layer set up here. So we've got layer fill and that's our current layer there. And hatch is on the draw panel here on the home tab on the ribbon. It's right there. Click on the little fly out and you've got hatch, gradient or boundary. Make sure you select hatch because they do look similar. As soon as you select hatch, you'll notice the ribbon changes and goes into the hatch creation tab. I'm going to select solid fill, which is that one there. And then I'm going over here to pick points. Now, before I pick points, though, I want to check some settings. Go over here to the options panel, click on the fly out menu, and you want outer island detection switched on? No. Click on the down arrow, you want normal island detection. Make sure that is on. Then go to your pick points at the other end of the ribbon there. And as you hover now, you'll get a highlight like so. 
And that's a preview of that solid fill using the fill layer. So I'll click there. I'm going to go inside the circle as well. I want to use that hatch boundary or fill boundary in this case and click. And then once I've done that, I'm going to press enter. Be careful, don't click again. See the highlights? It's highlighting all the other areas. So move outside the shapes now and press enter to finish like so. Now, transparency. How do I change the transparency? Well, I switch it on. If I click on transparency, nothing happens. That's because I haven't changed the hatch transparency yet. That solid fill needs its transparency switched on. If I double click on it, what will happen there is I get the quick properties come up that we'll look at in a moment. I don't need those, so I can actually close that. But here, the hatch editor kicks in. See the tab? I click and drag on the hatch transparency there, and I'm going to change that to 50. I can drag or I can type a value in. So it shows your mouse skills there. As you can see, a little bit fiddly. So the trick there is you can actually click in the box, type in 50, and press Enter, and that's done. So it's now 50% transparent. So what I can do is I can press enter, that's done, hit escape to lose that menu. Now it is transparent. If I switch transparency on, you'll see it kind of grays out. But the nice thing about that is when you've got lots of hatches and lots of fills on a drawing, you can see the things underneath, in this case, the circle. Switch that off. Because I've already switched transparency on, that circle will always be there. But if I select that circle, and then I right click and here go to draw order and send that to the back and hit escape. Because I've set the transparency for that, I obviously see it there sitting on the drawing. However, I can change the ordering option so it's at the back and it disappears. Now, transparency, switch it on, I can see the circle underneath. So it doesn't matter with the draw order or with the transparency. Draw order puts it behind, so the circle is behind that fill. So in a regular environment, I wouldn't see it. Because I've got transparency set to 50%, I can see that behind the solid fill.